Hallelujah. Good morning. My name is um, Bishop Lashoya Garrett. I am the senior pastor of Covenant Christian Church. God bless you. Um, we are blessing and honoring the Lord for his perfect grace and for his presence. Um, I'm just listening to a little bit of worship this morning and uh, um, um, just in my heart, blessing God for for uh, this week. Um, if you are in Christendom, you understand that this is an important week. Um, and it's, an, it, it's a week that sometimes we, we blow past so that we can get to the resurrection. There's so much that happened in this week. Um, I'm a, a, a firm believer in going through to get to the, to the blessing. Amen. Father, we, we honor you. We thank you for your grace. We thank you, Lord, that you are sufficient for us. We don't need anything else, God, outside of you. We don't need anything else outside of your 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 uh, way. We don't need anything else outside of your will. Lord, we bless you and we honor you. Um, we thank you, Lord, that you give us life. And we thank you, God, that you extend to us the ability to worship you and to serve you. And God, you have created, um, you've, you've created this environment that is conducive for worshiping you. We bless your name. Lord, we withhold nothing from you today. Um, we surrender all to you. We withhold nothing from you today. Father, we pray that in you we would rest. In you we would gain strength. In you we would be renewed. In you, oh God, we can come and boldly come to you. In you, there is a life everlasting. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you, God, for being the lamb slain. We bless you. Hold us, God, hold us and keep us, anchor us in you. I pray today, Lord, that you may be, you may be edified today. I pray today for clarity, God, to share about who you are and for what you've done. Um, there is none like you. <laughs> Searched all over, God, and we can never find anyone like you. And so we worship. To worship you, we live, we worship you. We worship you. We sit at your feet like Mary as we serve like Martha. We worship you. We worship you, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Withholding nothing this morning. We withhold nothing from you this morning. God, we withhold nothing from you this morning. We withhold nothing from you this morning. Withholding nothing. Nothing. Mm. Nothing, God. Sometimes there's a pulling and a tugging, oh God, just to settle down, to settle in, and to bless your name. We withhold nothing from you today. We, we, we dare not withhold our worship. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Mm. We bless you, oh God, so you can use, in the name of Jesus, amen. Glory to the Lord. God bless you guys as you are coming in. Hallelujah. Give myself away. Hallelujah. There is nothing like, nothing like sitting in his presence and to glory in his name and to worship him to worship him I'm I'm trying so hard to get to the teaching this morning because and and it is the teaching I think that has pushed me into this place of it has been my catalyst for worship I, I wanted to get on and teach and move out of the way and and the Holy Spirit just arrest me because what we're talking about is uh, what has been entitled Monday, Monday, Thursday, Monday, Thursday, Holy Thursday, Holy, Holy Thursday in this Holy Week and, and in this Holy Week where we began, he, he, 
He started, of course, in the triumphal entry. But today, 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 oh my God, today is the day to commemorate. Um, he says, this you do in the remembrance of me. It talks about the Holy Eucharist. Today is the day that he became the epitome of servanthood. Today is the day that he became the epitome uh, and the description of how to serve. If you don't, if you can't humble yourself enough, if I can't, let me do me, humble myself enough to wash your feet. If I can't humble myself to get to the dirtiest part of you and to to submit myself to serve you, to, to wash your feet. <laughs> this is the day that we learn, not my will. This, this is the day that begins the process of him going through everything he went through so that you and I can get to him again and be restored to the Father. Mm. I, I got to come out of this. Lord have mercy. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. I don't know if y'all can hear this worship music in the background. Um, um, <laughs> I don't know if you can hear this. Show me some hearts if you can hear the song that is playing. And, 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 and I'm, I'm caught up because the word says... I with, I'm withholding nothing from you. I give you all of me. I give you all of me. I surrender all. <laughs> because all I want is you, God. You gave us everything. You surrendered all, God. Jesus, you surrendered all. Jesus. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Oh, all I want is you. Give myself away. I give myself away. I, I I pray you're worshiping in your own place right now. We're getting there. We're going to get there. To worship you, I live. Isn't he worth it? To worship you, I live and live. To worship you. Oh, we bless your name, Jesus. Oh, God. Okay, all right. Mm. Oh, God. Um. Today, I, I thought it was fitting, um, and the Lord um, has us in a place where uh, we began learning about and studying and um, getting more in depth into Holy Week. Um, I want to teach and build a little capacity. You may or may not know this. Um, you may or may not be familiar with things that happened, and but may or may not know or realize the significance of what happens. And so, as I began to um, continue this week in the furnace. This furnace today is all about um, Jesus Christ and it's all about um, the significance of the Last Supper that he he um, shared with the disciples. And um, today is all about um, what has been titled Monday, Thursday. Monday comes from the Latin word um, that derives from command. And Monday, Thursday is connected back to good morning. God bless you guys. Let me, let me greet you. I apologize. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. God bless you. Bishop Rogers bless you. Uh, trustee, um, Arian. God bless you. Uh, minister 
Co-Pastor um, Jordan, God bless you. Of course, to the Chief Apostle, the Lord bless you, men of God. Um, God bless you, Sister uh, Kawana May. God bless you, Overseer. God bless you guys. God bless you. God bless you, um, um, uh, Minister Lagora. And if I'm messing up your titles, pray for me. Give me grace. Um, God bless you, Ever um, Ever Stephanie. Uh, we 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 honor the Lord for His perfect grace. So we're talking about Monday, Thursday, and we're talking about this is the day that uh, we deal with, we celebrate um, that signifies the Holy Communion, or you may know it as the Holy Eucharist. Um, it is also taught when when the Lord Jesus gave command. He said He said this. He said. Um, love. Um, he said, this command that I give to you, he says, love one another as I have loved you. And, and so in this holy week, in this holy week, it is so easy for us in Christendom. And it does, I don't know, I, I don't know what denomination you come from. I don't really even care. Um, but I know that in church, let me put it that way in church, sometimes we jump from going to his triumphal entry to his resurrection. And there was a week that occurred between that. And in the interim, in the dash of the triumphal entry on Palm Sunday to the resurrection on what we call our Easter Sunday, there was a week of holy that took place. And the week of holy isn't, isn't, isn't the, the, the pretty side of kingdom. The week of holy um, deals with the things that, and it signifies the things that our Lord Jesus had to go through. And he went through not because he himself did anything. He went through because we needed him to go through so that we could be reconnected, restored, redeemed, so that we could be bought with the price that only he could satisfy I need, oh, Jesus, help me get through this today. Because only he could hit. Only he, he, only he had enough to ransom us. Only his sacrifice was big enough to ransom us, to, to, to ransom us. God bless you as you're coming in. Only his sacrifice one slave for everyone else. One man for everyone else. Only his sacrifice. He, he is the all. He's the all sufficient one. Only his sacrifice could have done it. Woo. I won't apologize for worship. And I, I'm going to try to get through this. I'm going to try to give you what you need. But I promise you at this place. <laughs> This is the thing. Yes. When you get to a place where you understand that had he not ransomed me, I don't know what his ransom bought you from. I don't know what it got you out of. But I know what it got he got me out of. I, I don't know what the blood had to redeem you from. But I know the remission that it got me. I know what it remitted for me. And when you think about the things that the Lord, only the Lord could have restored us from. Only the Lord could have got us, gotten us out of. Only the Lord could have, could have arrested us from. He allowed himself to go through what he went through. Ooh. My God, my God, my God, my God. There, there, you, who? The, I, don't, I, I don't understand how when, when we would think about what he, what he did. Listen, for you. Because you mean that much to him. You meant that much to him. All creation means that much to him. He gave himself away. <laughs> oh, 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give myself away. So on that this week, <laughs> Holy Week, Palm Sunday, marks the beginning of Holy Week. And it's the last week of Lent. Um, Lent is an observance where uh, for 40 days um, uh, from Ash Wednesday, people give up um, something. <laughs> and don't you know that, that, that we can't give up anything compared to what he gave up? Okay, so we get to this last week leading up to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And um, it, it talks about how on, on Holy Wednesday, Holy Wednesday, this, this would have been yesterday if we were to walk the week down. Holy Wednesday is the day that Judas Iscariot um, committed himself to the betrayal. It's the day that Judas Iscariot committed himself to the betrayal of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, his intent to betray Jesus. And, and then on Thursday, today, Monday, Thursday, today commemorates the day where, 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 where Jesus um, um, has his last supper with the disciples. <sighs> and in having his last supper with the disciples, it was both beautiful and bitter. At the same time, at the last supper with the disciples, yes, it is. It is when we we get the the ordinance of uh, the act of communion, the worship of communion, the command of communion. When he told the disciples, the same way he told the disciples, it's a perpetual um, ordinance. It's a perpetual um, act of worship. Communion is a worship to him. It's not just something that people grab to do on Sundays. First, excuse me, first Sunday. Okay, first Sunday we have communion. We get dressed up. We put on our black and our white and, and we may get in our civic attire. Your civic meaning get them, put on our collars or put on our robes if you're in a robe. It, it, it has nothing to do with that. That is a man-made addition. <laughs> Watch this. And, and I, I bless the Lord for Chief Apostle. He mentioned it in a teaching. He said, um, in, in one of his teachings, he said, if we were going to really observe it and be ritualistic about it, we would have communion once a year on a Thursday. Because it is in the observance of the Passover that is connected to the Passover feast that is connected to the Last Supper that we call Holy Communion on this Monday, Thursday, once a year. Hallelujah. But he gave us some grace and said, as often as you do it, do it, do it in remembrance of me. Remember me. Remember my body. Now, can I just teach for just a minute? Let, let me just teach for a minute. He says, remember my body. Took bread and he said, this is symbolic of my body. Took wine and said, this is symbolic of my blood. All right. So that is what we call our Holy Communion. Or it is also called um, the Holy Eucharist. So on this day, on this day, um, at this supper, there are a couple of things that took place um, in the Last Supper. <clears throat> I need to give you one cross reference scripture because I don't I don't want anybody saying um she talked but didn't didn't give us any word. I'm uh, I think we're gonna go into Luke. Let's just go to Luke. Luke chapter twenty two verse seven through thirty nine. Um if you're moderating for me today, I want you to drop in each of these scriptures because I'm going to drop the scriptures in and I'm going to give you a homework assignment. Go read each account. Go read these scriptures that are connected to this. Luke 27, 7 through 39. Um, John 13, 
1 through 17 and verse 26. Matthew 26, 17 through 30. And Mark 14, 12 through 26. Those are accountings of what we're talking about right now, dealing with the Last Supper. So on that, on that Wednesday, uh, Judas intended, he had made the intent to betray him. On Monday, Thursday, which is where we are now, um, it commemorates the Last Supper of Jesus Christ, where he shared it in the upper room with his disciples. And at this supper, he, he also um, revealed that one of you are going to betray me. You know, it's something when, when, when you have to, and I, and I know that Jesus gave us the example of this is how you go through. Blessings, Brother Leverett. This is how you go through when you have to sit at the table with uh, an enemy that you with, with someone who's supposed to be a friend that you know has betrayed you see jesus gave us this is how you still have to go, go sit at the table sometimes with those that are going to betray you and it's not that you don't have discernment or who have already betrayed you it's not that you don't have discernment or knowledge that there has been or will be a betrayal because the spirit of the lord will give us wisdom and knowledge about who 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 we're laboring with who we're walking with who watch this judas had a part judas just didn't get foul when judas in on that wednesday Judas didn't get fouled the day before Thursday when they were commemorating the Last Supper. Judas just getting, did, Judas, Judas's heart was of a, he took money. Judas's hand stayed in the money bag. And, and, and so, watch this, quit pushing away those that have a role that they play in your ministry, in your walk. Quit Quit pushing away those and trying to eradicate those that the Lord has not said, okay, disconnect from them. There are those that the Lord will say, disconnect from them. Is anybody out there this morning? Disconnect from them. Because, and I give you permission. Some people must play a role. Because the purposes of God have to come to pass. Watch this thing. Had not Judas not been himself and functioned in the capacity that he was already predisposed towards, there would not have been a need for the rest later on, which wouldn't have been a need for him to go through. But because things had been set in motion before Judas was ever thought about, he was a lamb Slint. He was sent for the slaughter. Whoo! So this is what happens on on the in the Last Supper. The Last Supper is connected to. I just told you it, it, it's connected to the the Passover week. The the Passover week, and and the Passover week um, is over in the book of Exodus when 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 it talks about how Israel. When the Lord was beginning to um, redeem them from Egypt, he was beginning to move them out of bondage. God is going somewhere with this. Stay with me. He is beginning to move them out of bondage. He, he's beginning to, to take them out of bondage. He's beginning to deliver them from bondage. See, when it's time for you to come out of bondage, you don't have time sometimes to get things in order. We stay because our flesh says, well, I got to get this in order. I need to do that. I need to do this. But when it is time for the exodus out of whatever that thing is, deliverance from whatever that, that is what the exodus commemorates. It's the deliverance of the people of God out of bondage. Oh my God. And he said to them, he said, I, I, I need you. In this, during this time, the day, the night before, remember God has sent all of those plagues and, and every time a plague was sent, 
every time God, and, and, and this is the thing, this is the thing. If you've never read the scripture, if you've never read it in its totality, we give Pharaoh too much, too many props. God was turning the head of the king. See, because if when he wanted to, he'd harden his heart and he'd do something else. This is the thing we have to understand. Where you are, where you've been, what you're going through, excuse me, where we are, where we've been, because I don't want you to think I'm just talking about you. What we've gone through, what we are going through, what we are going through has not, did not, does not, will not ever take God by surprise. He's creator God. Something we talked about, his majesty. We, we talked about how his, the might of God, the, the all-consuming presence of God. Don't he knows? He knows. Oh, my God, he knows. And so he set, he set things in motion. And on the Passover night, on the Passover, on the, the feast of the Passover, um, it, when it talks about, how, how back in that time, back in that time, um, back in the Exodus, um, they, 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 they put the blood on the post. It, it's, it's, it's not this, 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 this feast of the Passover, the last supper that we, when we commemorate, um, what Jesus did, his last supper happened during the time when all of the believers then were, were celebrating that same feast that commemorated, watch this, it wasn't just symbolic. It happened. The historic event of the firstborn being taken of the enemy took place on purpose as designed by God because it was the last thing that he did before the exodus. What, what has the Lord intentionally taken, calls to be taken from you because you're getting set up for exodus yourself, your own exodus? Mm. You, you thought you lost that thing. It was a must needs be sacrifice. Cause had it had it stayed the way that it was, bondage became familiar. Bondage became familiar. I'm toggling between the historical event and the commemorative event that Jesus did at the feast of the Passover. In the Last Supper. That, that, that thing that you thought. Oh God, I see you. That, that thing you thought you lost. <laughs> Watch this. And, and, and just like, just like, because, because, because things are familiar. Because we have the familiar. Let's connect some dots. Because we have the familiar of something, just because it's something that you've been doing, we've been doing, we've been in, we've, we've, we've been at that place for so long, we feel like this is my portion. You know how many years they served in bondage before the Lord came, before God, before God sent and said, let my people go. Do you know how many years? And so what happened was in the struggle, the struggle became so familiar until even after they had been, they had been rescued, even after the exodus and they got out in the wilderness, they started complaining and said, you just should have, y'all should have left us back in bondage. Does that not sound like us sometimes when God gets us out? God, God brings us out. God delivers us out of a thing. And because what he delivered us from was a familiar bondage, we, we wanted to go back to it because we knew it. 
You want to know why some people, some people hold on to um, abuse. They hold on to depression. They hold on to anxiety. I promise you, I'm in here. I'm in here. I'm right here in here. I, I hear him, and you need to hear what he's saying. They hold on to the, that, that spirit, that familiar spirit, because that bondage they identify with. It's familiar. I know, I know how to, I know how to take that bondage. When, when sometimes deliverance costs us to, to sacrifice familiar. Mm, thank you. At least we had graves in Egypt. Watch God. So fast forward. Let's drop on. Let's drop in on Monday, Thursday. Um, I got a couple more things I need to. I, I was gonna go into the Passover feast. Um, but but I'm not gonna go all the way into that. Oh Jesus, I'm past my time already. Okay, so the blood. Let me pick. Grab this one thing. The blood was spread on the homes of the people of Israel. And it symbolized life. Where there was blood, the lives of the firstborn would be spared. So what they were commissioned to do was to put the blood on the doorpost. And wherever there was blood, the death angel would move over that place and would only take the firstborn of those who um uh, the firstborn of those who weren't the homes that weren't covered in the blood. I know you see me. The homes who weren't covered in the blood only took the firstborn of the homes that weren't marked by the blood. The, the firstborn of the homes that did not have the blood on the doorpost. So this is the thing, the connection to Christ. And yes, there is a connection between the Passover and Holy Communion. And it is a symbolic connection because what it says is if you want to be secure, you got to be covered by the blood. When we want, when we want the, we want the benefit of the Passover so that death does not come. A pestilence, it cannot come nigh my dwelling place. It can't come here because the blood is on the doorpost. And I don't mean the doorpost. Don't walk outside and put some blood on your house on the outside. No, what I'm talking about is the temple here is covered by the blood. The blood covers. And, and so God says, I, I'm going to let the pestilence pass over your house because you're covered by the blood. Ooh. Monday, Thursday. On Monday, Thursday, Jesus, Jesus um, let, let the disciples know at the feast of the Passover, he says, one of you is going to betray me. So the act of betrayal was exposed at the table. And watch this. Because God understood that Judas served a purpose after the act of betrayal, he told Judas, he said, whatever you're going to do, go on, go do it quickly. Go do it quickly. Go do it quickly. Go do it quickly. Jesus was letting Judas know you serve a purpose and I understand what it is. You have my permission now. Go do it quickly. The enemy does nothing without the permission of God. Go do it quickly. See, we are either in God's perfect will or we are either in God's permissive will. But he is not unaware. Go do it quickly. Whew. All right. Oh, God. Oh, God. Mm. Okay. Lord, have mercy. Okay. So, on Monday, Thursday, um, and we've heard this, we've heard this many, many, we've heard this, we've heard this theology many times. And, and if you've ever participated in a communion, if you've ever participated, or Eucharist, whatever you want to call it, if you've ever participated in the communion, Jesus, Jesus says in, 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 in this, he says, he says, as often as you eat the bread and drink this cup, cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is central to our faith. Because if, if, watch this, you can't even say you're a believer unless you believe in his ability to forgive sins, remit sins that comes through his death. And he said, as often as you do this, as often as you do this, 
we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The celebration of the last meal with the disciples, Jesus said, eat this to remember me. Eat this to remember me. This sacrament, eat, eat this bread, drink this cup, drink all of it to remember me. Oh, okay. So, um, I don't know, I don't know where Bishop Petway is going tomorrow. Um, but tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow is the beginning of, um, the, the end of the week where we go through, we get to the crucifixion of Christ. Um, and if you've been a Christian for a while, I, I, I think that sometimes, and I shared this at the beginning of the broadcast, I'm, I'm coming to an end. Thank you guys for, ter for staying with me. Um, that we have to stop rushing from Palm Sunday to get to the resurrection on Easter Sunday and not acknowledge not acknowledge what led up to the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior. There is purpose in everything that took place before the cross. Just as much purpose as everything that took place after the cross. Because you remember that on this Thursday, on this night, on this night he said, no man takes my life. I lay it down. All right. All right. Love you guys. I love you guys. I bless the Lord for you. I'm going to end for you. Um, but I don't feel an end for me. Um, because when I think about this, when I think about him, when I Think about what he gave. And watch this. And he only had to do this once. He, he doesn't crawl on the cross every time sin is committed. He doesn't do that. Once and for all. One sacrifice. I honor him for that. I honor him. Oh, there was something I wanted to also mention to you. Foot washing. Um, it was, I briefly mentioned it earlier. And if you are a new convert... Um, the, the, the rule thing that the enemy has taken, you know, the enemy is the greatest, uh, mimicker. He doesn't create anything new. He's an imitator. And so there is a service that people do that is uh, foot washing that has nothing to do with Jesus Christ and what is sacred. So if you are just coming into Christ, I don't want you to think that is the same thing. That's not the celebration. That's not the act of service that is connected with our Lord and Jesus Christ. That foot washing has nothing to do with what is connected to Jesus. Um, so I wanted to make sure that that was clear for new believers, um, new converts that may have experienced it. It's a totally different thing. All right. God bless you guys. I, I speak today, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you for a moment of worship in you. God, I pray that you would carry the people of God throughout their day. God, let us let us remain seated at your feet. Even as we serve like Martha, let us remain seated at your feet like Mary. And in your presence, God, breathe over us your life's breath, your pneuma. Restore unto us the joy of your salvation. We glory in you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Jesus' name. Amen. Um, yes, foot washing is Christ. Amen. God bless you guys. Have, it, have an amazing day. We'll see you next Thursday in the Fairness Furnace. Don't forget, tomorrow is Bishop Petway, and we are at Fresh, Fresh Fire. We're going to travel to Mobile virtually and hear the man of God break the bread of life to us and build us up and uh, restore us 
Um, if you have been missing out, like these church pages from Kingdom Agenda Fellowship, because so many, uh, so many ministries are coming and sharing encouragement and coming and sharing the word and, and, and having Bible studies and having moments um, where we sit at his feet and we just talk about him. He is enough. He is enough. Um, we're going on about 42 minutes now just in this broadcast, and I promise you, I'm not close. I could keep going. I could keep going and going and going because God is raising up, and God is, God has already lit the fire of revival. It's lit. It's already lit. And his anointing is lighting all over the place. Because without the fanfare, the only thing he's proving that the only thing you need is my word so that you can have an opportunity to serve and worship and obey me. Remember the greatest commandment. Love it. Love one another. Even, if, even as I have loved you and he loved us enough to lay down his life. Love that way. That is agape. All right, I got I'm going. I'm going. <laughs> Y'all have a blessed day.